Only on News 9, we are digging into the 11-year-old cold case of Karina Saunders. The 19-year-old savagely killed, police finding parts of her body behind a grocery store in Bethany. Lisa Monahan, following the case, she's joining us here at the table, tracking down possible suspects for our latest Oklahoma's own original, Dying for Answers. Lisa, thanks for coming in, and you have put so much effort into solving and trying to, to get here. more answers question a answers to yes, this I appreciate the opportunity to be here I want to open as many eyes as possible to this case I mean it's a horrific case and I'm hoping that by sharing some of the journey with this year-long investigation we've been on that it'll compel you to watch our special report tonight it's an hour and a half dying for answers airing right here on news 9 and so that's why we are hoping to share some of what we've been through behind mm -hmm. the scenes with you guys this morning and your viewers. It's been a long journey. We want to update our viewers and kind of catch you up on this case. Again, it happened in 2011. Take a look back at uh, part of that case right now. It just seems like it gets harder each year. Because that's one more year without answers. One more year without justice. It's one more year without those people responsible behind bars. The case has been shrouded in mystery from day one. October 13th, 2011, the day Karina Saunders' dismembered body was found in bags behind a grocery store in Bethany, Oklahoma. Since then, local and state investigators have run down hundreds of leads to no avail. Several possibilities have been explored, starting with state investigators affirming that she left the Newcastle Casino in a red Ford truck October 8th. But from there, the timeline splinters into theory and speculation with wide ranging and often conflicting stories and statements from witnesses, persons of interest and two initial suspects. But one fact that is still undisputable, Karina Saunders murder was as heinous as any ever committed in Oklahoma and that it remains unsolved is unbelievable for so many. Now, again, the special report, Dying for Answers, tonight. It starts at 6.30. To kind of take us through the process, you said you've worked a year. We've kind of watched you go through this. You know, cold cases are hard to start really digging deeper. What did you guys do? Well, it's interesting. Um, I've been a crime reporter for nearly 20 years now, and 10 years of that have been working this case. It... Um, so we weren't reinventing the wheel, so to say, as you would have to with some of these cold cases. When you uh, dive into a cold case, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. I, well, I was there in the beginning, so I had that advantage of knowing the key players and places um, getting started on this. Um, and that's really what we did, is we hit the ground, as you're seeing here. We went into the places. We said, where did Karina go last? Who was she with? What was she doing? We want to go to those same places and see if we can unearth some new information. If we can talk to someone who maybe had been too afraid to come forward, mm -hmm. maybe they have a distrust of law enforcement or a fear that they could end up like Karina. Mm -hmm. Goodness. You know, this whole case is shocking from the front to the back, everything. But is there an oh wow moment for you even in this shocking case? I think there were a lot of oh wow moments. I, I believe as we started following the timeline um, put out by investigators, we found uh, more information that we could add to that timeline. It was fairly vague in the beginning. Um, we knew that her last place was Newcastle Casino. She was said to, to leave in a red uh, Ford truck with some unknown males, um, a vague description there just with tattoos. But as we started digging and talking with some witnesses who had been too afraid to come forward or who had been interviewed by investigators, we found that maybe she was never at the Newcastle Casino that night. Goodness. Mm. You yeah. know, uh, just even in the promo, watching it and hearing someone who is disguised saying, if, if they find out that I am talking, I could lose my life. You know, h how did you earn trust from some of these people to really come forward and share more because you've been following this as you said for 10 years you did another special that won an emmy now an hour and a half investigation that people will see tonight tell us about that process a little bit i really think the fact that i've stuck with this all these years um people know that i know the case that i'm not here today gone tomorrow really helped a lot in sort of um, getting that trust built between them um, i knew a lot too and so that really helped a lot they they knew that i knew 
who I was talking to and what I wanted to know. So they didn't shy away. Now, I know that um, in some instances, the private investigator aspect worked against me. Um, this was a unique thing. I, this case compelled me to get a license, to be a state licensed private investigator. And in doing so, now I'm navigating being a journalist and being a private investigator, using both of those skill sets. Mm -hmm. And I think that was helpful. Um, you know, some fear law enforcement in, in her circles and, and some do not. And right. so we were able to kind of play both sides of that in this, and I think that helped quite a bit. Let Lisa. me ask you uh, just one thing quickly about the relationship with the family, with sure. Karina's mother and father, because we, uh, they're desperate for answers too. You know, that's the thing. Um, that's what really pulled me into this case. Uh, Karina's parents, they are lovely people. Um, they have extended grace through all of the twists and turns that have happened in the last decade. They've kept their composure. And they're really uh, victims in all of this. You know, Karina was the primary victim um, in, in her violent death. But Richard Saunders and Margie Queen have been victimized time and time again. They are really tortured not knowing who killed their daughter. Do you think someone will ever be brought to justice? In I this believe case? this is solvable. Okay. I believe that um, we just need a little bit more evidence to put this into play. And I, I do believe that someone will be brought to justice. We want to show a preview of what folks will see tonight. Why don't you set this up for us, Lisa? Okay, so we, as I mentioned, we were going and hitting the road. We spent hundreds of hours. Uh, photojournalist Mike Weber and I were in the car, countless hours, uh, knocking on doors right here in the metro, which is what makes it so significant, is the fact that we were really making the rounds right here in the Oklahoma City area, knocking on doors, dangerous places, chasing down leads. It took us into some pretty dark places. Do you recognize her? You can see that there's speckles here. But that's evidence left behind. Your name keeps coming up in this investigation. We have the Homeland store right here. They think you're getting too close. When you say she's living on the street, where would I find her? Don't ever jeopardize yourselves for these answers. Did you kill Karina Saunders? No, I did not. She was found in a field just right over. Did you kill Karina? I've never murdered anybody. We're here. Let's go. Are you kidding me? You think this is somehow safe? Please leave. Oh, right, right, right down there. I think that getting too close definitely jeopardizes your life. One way in and, and no way out. So why are all these people coming up dead? I just want to ask you a couple of questions. The less that I knew, the better off I was. You know, I want the answers, but not at the cost of somebody else's life. Oh, it just gives you chills, Lisa. It really does. Oh, my goodness. The exclusive is tonight starting at 630, and you're asking people, hey, reach out afterwards, tell me what you think. Maybe there's somebody out there that's never spoken up before. I believe that's possible. We definitely want to hear from them. Oh, so our Oklahoma's own original, Dying for Answers, Lisa Monahan and our photojournalist Mike Weber have been uh, really committed a year of their lives, day in, day out, to the special report. It starts at 630 tonight. Do not miss it right here on News 9. Lisa, thanks for talking to us. We yeah, appreciate it. Me. Yeah, great work. Can't wait to see it tonight, Lisa.